Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Train Simulator Classic, aka Railworks. Today we're going to be taking a look at the latest and greatest from Machine Rail. Yeah, yeah I know, I didn't get to it the day it came out. Um, I was actually out on some jet boats the day this came out. So, yeah, I was out enjoying myself but uh, if you were in a rush to see it I'm sure most of you have already watched the laughably more popular youtubers do their videos on it so but some of you like to hear my opinion so we're here to take a look at it we got one coming down the rails right now um, yeah this was released by machine rail on Friday it's the Illinois Central 1500 class 2A2 Mikados uh, built by Lima we're gonna let this pass cuz it is loud with a headset on that is quite interesting no uh, no smoke on the AI oh, it has a little bit of smoke a little Ugh. Uh, little cotton balls coming out of the stack there. I'm not a fan of that. Anywho, now that we can hear ourselves think. <laughs> Actually sounds pretty good. Uh... I've only had a few minutes to play around with this. Uh, it's been a pretty busy couple of days. Um, obviously, Friday I was out on the boats. Uh, Saturday and Sunday I've been at work. So, I haven't had a whole lot of... Actually, no, Saturday I wasn't at work. Saturday I got to go... Uh, I called off. Spent the day with my wife. You know, nice to take time off. And enjoy time with family, right? But, uh, yeah, so, <clears throat> anyway, this thing came out on Friday. I haven't had a chance to look at it. Now we're taking a, a moment to actually look at it, finally. Uh, but, I've been watching this for a while. Machine Rail has been uh, hard at work on this one since uh, January-ish. This was kind of their kickoff to a new year, but, uh... <laughs> this was one of their commissions, so... Somebody paid Machine Rail to build this for them and put it up for sale. Uh, I actually know the guy that commissioned it on Facebook, but uh, I had a bit of a mixed feeling with this, with this pack. Uh, just on my opinions as the pack in and of itself, not so much as the locomotive, but uh, it's kind of a mixed mixed bag here. Uh, we. Uh, as far as the American side, we have not gotten a single 282 in ever. Um, well, I say ever. There are the Brit Kids 282s, but they are dated, and they show it, and they were dated when they first um, introduced. The modeling's very dated, but not to hate on them, but we, we haven't gotten a, a high-end 282 in Train Simulator for... United for North America in general at all ever which is quite sad but finally American steam is taken off in train simulator thanks to developers like machine rail and smokebox but uh so we're finally getting a nice high-end 2a2 but it's a road specific 2a2 that doesn't have a road so as of right now, we do not have a prototypical route for this pack, like at all. There's <laughs> nowhere for it to go. But uh, <laughs> that's not to say we can't enjoy it. It's not to say we can't fiddle with it. Um, for the few minutes that I have been able to tinker with it, it's a, it's a really nice pack. It really is. Uh, they did a great job on it. Sounds great. Looks great. All that fun stuff. Uh, typical machine rail. High quality, but... Like I said, kind of a mixed feeling, because as of right, as of currently, if you're looking for prototypical operations, this pack's going to be a little bit useless to you. Um, 
if you're just looking to play around with it, absolutely. Um, but anyway, uh, these locomotives are built by Lima. There is one single survivor of the class. Um, the Illinois Central had one, uh, I believe, the third largest uh, group of 2A2 mics in the United States. So it's kind of entertaining that only one single locomotive survived. But that one locomotive also has a very large chance of having been the last commercial coal-fired coal steam locomotive in the United States in operation. Uh, I believe it was retired in the 60s. It's pretty late for any kind of steam locomotive. Uh, in the U.S. at least. Uh, there are some places around the world where steam is still very much in hard at work. But One single survivor. Um, it is in display in Kentucky. And yeah, it's about all the history I know of it. It's not not one I've never dove off into all that much. Illinois Central is not a not a road that I dive into very much. That's not my uh, not my cup of tea. But yeah, whatever. So as far as the pack goes, you're gonna get two different locomotives. You're gonna get a uh, you're gonna get an as built, and you're gonna get a modified. Um, you know, surprise. <laughs> Um, later on, the uh, the Illinois Central did do some bits and pieces here as far as changing up some stuff to more fit their desires or needs. Um, locomotives also went through a couple of renumbers, but you'll get two different locomotives, different ish. One tender, the tender didn't change, so one tender. You'll get a box car, a flat car with stakes, a couple different loads. Flat car without stakes with the same couple different loads. Some uh, gondolas with a couple different loads. Some hoppers with a few different loads. A reefer. Three sets of, uh, or three different tank cars, which I believe it's uh, three different levels of weathering. And a caloose. Now, I'm not going to lie. The freight is what's had me excited for this pack. So, as far as American, North American railroading goes in uh, Train Simulator, we haven't really gotten new rolling stock in years. I mean years, like literal years. Uh, it's one thing that just about every other country uh, represented in Train Simulator has over the United States and Mexico and Canada. We don't get anything new. We've been, as far as modern rolling stock goes, we haven't officially gotten anything from DTG ever. Not since the release of the game. Like, good. We, we get the same thing with the same with the roots every single time. It's the same Kuju RSC models that are long outdated, as we've seen in a couple of my root videos. Now there are some other rolling stock available from some other DLCs. But they're about as old. <laughs> and as far as steam era, my preferred era, uh, we got great northerners, uh, the golden age of rail freeware stuff many years ago. And it is still available. It is still a, an active freeware website. You can still absolutely go pick them up. And I still use them fairly often, in large part because it's all we've gotten. But they're another one of those that... They care, and a lot of his stuff came out a long time ago, and hasn't been updated since. It hasn't gotten an upgrade, an update, or anything. Uh, now, some of you might say, well, there's new stuff in routes like the Boston or Albany. It's not new, it's just reskinned. It's the same old models that have been up on the Freeware website for quite some time now, and it shows. So, as cool as the locomotives are... We have gotten fresh new locomotive models for North America, for Canada and the United States. Mexico has kind of gotten screwed, but Canada and the United States have gotten fresh new models. Now, their quality, eh, we can argue about later, but we have gotten fresh models. Rolling stock, we haven't gotten jack quiet. So I was excited to see some actually fresh new rolling stock. Actual quality 
stuff that's not covered in 2D textures. So, um, yeah, you're going to get an outside braced wooden box car. And, uh, right off the bat, it actually is really, really nice. It's got some nice texturing. Um, it is un it is hard to tell. You can kind of see the ribs to the uh, to the wood, but there's not a lot of depth to it, which is kind of it's not really noticeable. What really is noticeable, though, is the low res Illinois Central lettering here. Um, that's not that great. Not gonna lie. That looks way crispier than that. Matter of fact, the numbering here. Now, granted, okay, where it's due. This is digitalized numbering, so that uh, all these cars can have random numbering instead of having the same number. So they do have a, they do have a, a dynamic numbering system. They're not all the same number. Um, I know that was some people's worries that were watching Rolling Stock as hard as I was. Um, some of Machine Rail's older content, when they did include Rolling Stock, a lot of it was not dynamically numbered. It just had one set number on it. Um, a lot of their early Brazilian stuff and whatnot. So, thankfully, these are all dynamically numbered, so you're not stuck with the same number. But, unfortunately, the lettering is pretty low res, and it shows. When you get up close, it's not too bad from, boom, how about here, a couple tracks over. But you start to get close, you definitely see the pixels. Um, same for the capacity, the load limits, and whatnot here. But the actual model itself is really nice. <laughs> like that. Oh, I love it. Actual nuts and bolts. No 2D textures. <laughs> Some people might make fun of me for harping on 2D textures, but come on guys, it's 2023. 2D textures are kind of piss poor at this point. Um, that is kind of interesting. I definitely noticed that. That's a little wonky. Now, nah, this is kind of me finding things. Uh, kind of me looking for things that kind of stand out, but uh, I guess kind of noticeable. I don't know what that is, but same for here. It's kind of weird. A little bit of white showing right there. How very odd. Something wonky going on here. Huh. Not too terribly noticeable. Just when you get up close to it. Um. Yeah, that is nice. It's really nice. I love all the 3D texture or the 3D modeling. Texturing doesn't look half bad. It is kind of flat. Uh, up close, it is kind of low res, but it's not bad. It's definitely not bad. And I imagine you reskinners out there are gonna have a ball with it. So, <laughs> but uh. It's just so nice to see so much 3D texturing. Or 3D modeling. Underneath looks pretty good. We got our box car. Next we got our uh, got our flats. So these are our steak flats. You'll get a set with some old poppin' johnnies. And a couple of... Uh, 18 wheeler boxes here. Uh, one in the Illinois Centrals, uh, maroon and orange. Another one just a generic white. I'm sure uh, you reskinners are going to have a ball with that generic white. Um, again, the, these right here are not something we've necessarily not seen before. The, uh, oh, what are they called? TOFC, something like that. Um, they're not necessarily a new idea. We have seen them. Once again, going back to the Golden Age of Rel, he does have a bunch of these that are freeware, but like I said earlier, they are dated. They're very dated, and they definitely show their age. Um, so it is nice to see an actually updated model. 
with what looks like some pretty good attention to even the trailer, which is all too often overlooked in uh, train sim in general. Um, I know a lot of my British content and some of the German stuff, the loads are just kind of like afterthoughts. Um, now the lettering is a little bit eh. You can definitely see that kind of blurry low res texturing going on here. The, uh, the blocky lettering doesn't look half bad. It's definitely a little blurry on the smaller lettering, but the cursive is really eh. But the model itself looks awesome. I already know what some of you are about to do. You skipped the John Deere's. I certainly did. I'm about to come back to him. I have a squirrel brain. Hang on. Oh, yeah, it looks pretty good. It really does look pretty good. Yeah, if we wanted to be picky, there's no, uh, there's no handles to open the door. But, eh. And the ladder, ooh. Now that, that right there does look bad. I, that I won't lie. That is pretty, pretty low res, pretty, pretty poor quality right there. I don't know what's going on with the door here. You can definitely see through it. You can see that crack there. Um, bit odd there, but eh. I like it. Anywho, back to the John Deere's. Because I know my, uh, my farmer guys, my farming simulator fans, probably drool in here. Um, we've gotten tractors before, tractor loads. I know some of, uh, some of the German flat cars got some tractor loads, but holy crap, are they old? Um, and by old, I mean like square textures, kind of, <laughs> they're square objects, kind of old, square tires and whatnot. Um, very reminiscent of, <laughs> like, trains 2006. Um, so this was, this was a real real cool addition. Now I imagine due to licensing issues that's why they don't have uh, the John Deere lettering and whatnot across the side but it definitely looks like an old Pop and Johnny. Pop 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 pop. That's what they sound like. They got a uh, relatively small engine. Well relatively small interesting. Where's the, uh, where's the engine block? That is cool. That is very cool. Love some, uh, love some nice new, updated and upgraded loads. Ah, of course, we're not skipping the flat car. The flat car looks pretty good. The stakes themselves are kind of, eh. Stakes kind of look a little low res, but they're not bad. Not bad at all. The flat car itself. Overall, it looks pretty decent. If you look at some of the stuff a little at an odd angle, you can definitely see the rivets. Um, the rivets are all 3D models, but they're... I guess not... Um, they don't fill the gap, I guess would be a way to put it. So if you look at it at an odd angle up close, you can definitely see through the rivets. But other than that, they don't look half bad. Um, once again, kind of low res on the, uh, the IC in the Illinois Central here, while the numbering looks really, really good. Um, everything else looks pretty good. Now, some of you might get a little anal, because, oh no, it's not weathered the crap out of, which, I personally don't mind it. Um, this is a Midwestern Railroad, kind of, so, um. This is out somewhere where you'd, you'd see more kind of muddy dust. Um, more so than like the dark, heavy, coal weathering and whatnot that you get of the Eastern Railroads that we've gotten a majority of for Railworks. Um, so these won't have quite the same kind of heavy weathering that you would expect. But I actually like the weathering on these. I kinda, it's kind of nice. Uh, not over the top, just enough to make it look used. So... Oh, looks good. Um, next, we got a regular flat car. Just doesn't have the stakes on it. Other than that, same thing. Um, I kind of fail to see the point, though. You know, we got our stakes here. We got a regular flat car here. 
but they they all carry the same load like there's one of each you got a flat car with tractors it's got stakes one without same for the trailers so i kind of fail to see the point in the stakes um but you know it's cool it's another car to add on so it is nice uh, once again really slick looking tractors some old JDs. And of course, we got our hopper. Or these are our gondolas. Yeah, these are woodside gondolas. This look pretty good. Um, now there is a there's a bit of a difference whenever you put these down in a scenario. I'll go ahead and point this out now. Um, so you got uh you got the gondolas. You got the hoppers here. Now the hoppers are gonna be kind of the same they're going to be listed kind of the same as the gondolas it's going to be a b c the difference being for the gondolas a b and c is going to be your different loads so we got a b c for your hoppers it's going to be a different car so we got a b c with the same load so just something to point out real quick while we're here and I'm thinking about it because I will forget but once again new loads which is really really nice you know actual new loads not the same old tired coal texture <laughs> or gravel texture or whatever actual new loads it looks really nice but the cars themselves look really 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 nice the, uh, the lettering is again Kind of fuzzy, which is hidden a little bit better on the uh, on the weathering here. So this is a, obviously a rock car. It's got a rock load in it, kind of a gravel, chunky rock load. So it's gonna have a lot of gravel dust and dirt on it, especially in the nooks and crevices that won't get rain on it to wash it off. So the blurriness of the lettering is kind of hidden a little better, but it is still noticeably blurry um oh, that's cool these are gapped these are wooden boards so these won't match up perfectly that's actually kind of cool you can see the rock load behind it um eee, weird <laughs> that four makes that look a little wonky yeah not too bad Again, look at that, 3D, 3D stuff. Nuts, bolts, grab irons. <laughs> uh, I'm not a fan of whatever that texture is. Nuts, bolts, grab irons, chains, bracing. It's all actually modeled. It's not a freaking 2D texture board. And it makes a difference. It really does. You put this against some of the older rolling stock and it really stands out. So nice. So stinking nice. So of course we got a coal hopper here. Or a coal gondola. And the weathering is done to match. So where we've got rock dust over here, we got coal dust here. Again, it looks pretty nice. I believe these are all three supposed to be kind of the same color. Just uh the load weathering is done to match so it looks pretty good it is a little bit noticeable though with the numbering here <laughs> um you know we got our IC Illinois Central here it's kind of buried under coal dust and then uh 83 584 here that uh, sticks out like a really 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 sore thumb um, I imagine that has a lot, a lot to do with uh, the auto numbering system, but it's definitely noticeable. Um, again, car looks awesome, same as that one. It's the same car, just different load, so different weathering. Um, nice coal load, nice and uh, kind of randomized. It's not just a perfect flat. And we got a log car. A log load, an actual new log load, not the same you know, load of logs that DTM includes with every single SD series release. Um, so that's nice. 
actual new logs. Actually done really nicely. They're done real nice. And of course, since they're logs, it's not going to be a whole lot that's sticking to the car, so it's not uh, not near as heavily weathered as these. Just pretty smart, pretty good. There's a little bit right here in the crevices, just kind of a little bit of like dusty dirt. <laughs> so, that looks pretty good. <laughs> Look underneath, we got the blurry rigging and whatnot, it looks pretty good. Right on to our, uh, our hoppers. The hoppers look awesome. These are probably uh, one of my favorites in this pack. The hoppers and, I don't know, it'd be a close tie between the hoppers and the tank car, but the hoppers look really, really good. They really do. Um, in large part from 3D rivets, <laughs> it really makes a difference. <laughs> but uh, it looks pretty good. Pretty good. You will get a gravel and a coal load. And then you'll get three different kind of color options. So here we got kind of the middle-ish brown. Here's kind of a red. Here's kind of a faded brown. So <coughs> A, B, C. Really nice looking. Boogity boogity boo. Next we got a reefer. This is one that's kind of kind of a beaten dead horse. Uh, it's nice to see an actual new modeled ice reefer. Um, a properly new model instead of the same old Great Northern model that's been reused over and over and over and over and over. But that is kind of the other side of the spectrum. All the smoke box stuffs come with a PFE reefer. All the Great Northern stuff comes with a BFE reefer. All the steam arrow roots come with a BFE reefer. Three wear PFE reefers galore. Bit of a beaten horse, but on the other side of the spectrum, it's a brand new model. It's not the reused same old model. It's covered in 2D textures. Um, so hopefully some reskinners have a ball game with this. Uh, Rivets, you know, that uh, that logo turned out a lot better there than it did on the trailers up there. It looks pretty good. Hinges, <laughs> hinges look awesome. Door latches look awesome. It's so it's so noticeable having properly 3D model parts. Now I get it. it's not the easiest thing on the planet. It's time consuming. But when you finish it, it's a night and day difference between this and an older model. Massive night and day difference. So it looks really nice. It looks great. Now you will not get a kind of loaded, unloaded option like you do with the Great Northerner models. So Great Northerner models normally you'll get one with the hatches closed, which kind of simulates the loaded variant. One with these hatches open. Um, these hatches here, how you load these up, these old reefer cars were, uh, they would have ice packed in to the sides over here, and that's what kept them cold. So you'd pop these open and load them up with ice. Um, these don't come with these hatches open, but it's alright, truth be told. It's not really upsetting. <laughs> not an issue. Something we ain't seen in freaking forever. A new tank car. Every single blasted route we get has got that same old DTM slash RSC. One of those two tank cars that is so stinking old, so low res, it ain't even funny. Now granted it is meant to model a newer tank car, but holy crap. Is it nice and refreshing to see an actually new, entirely new model tank car. And it looks awesome. <laughs> now, some of the same issues kind of keep carrying across all the cars. The lettering is a little bit blurry, kind of low res, while the numbering looks phenomenal. But the model overall looks awesome. <laughs> and they're flammable. It's 
kind of a low res in general all right there but eh. see that that's a night and day noticeable difference there that just looks awesome it looks so nice it's so freaking cool to have some new tankers <laughs> some new steam era tankers that's not to say we haven't gotten some new steam era tankers they're dated they kind of show it these these look nice 3d rivets I know I harp on it, but 3D models make such a freaking difference. Now, much like, these are more like the uh, the hoppers. So there's an A, B, and a C. The A, B, and C is different levels of weathering. So A is kind of your clean. B, kind of your middle grade, while C is your kind of heavy. Um, and it's pretty nice. Weathering looks pretty good. Of course, you know, most of your weathering is going to be right here where you load it, uh, fill it up with oil, gas, whatever. Um, it's going to stain the sides for whatever you miss. Don't manage to get down in the tank car. Um, whereas your ends are just going to be dust. <laughs> so, they look pretty good. They really do. And last but not least, a caboose. An actual new caboose. Not the same old CA4 that's been reused a dozen times. Um, because this looks pretty good. Overall, it really does. These are actual, like, proper boards, not a 2D texture, which I imagine was a real headache to make, but it is there. It is modeled. It looks really good. We got an interesting side door here. Um, what you'd use that for, I don't know. Mother-in-law door? You know, throw mom-in-law out the door. Haha, <laughs> funny, I know. <laughs> But, um, uh, yeah, it looks really good. That's a really good one. And it's got a model interior. Which looks pretty darn good. The weaker chair. <laughs> looks pretty darn good. Now, of course, we'll look at it some more in a minute whenever we get to, uh, get to going. Looks pretty good. Pretty cool. Pretty sweet. See, this lettering's really, really nice. The lights look really, really, really nice. <laughs> lighting is definitely one of Machine Rail's strong points. That lighting looks really, really good. You know, not an obnoxious glare, not an LED bright. This looks good. Now what everybody else is waiting on. I know, I know. Everybody wants to see the locomotives. Screw the cars. I like the cars. I think it's nice. It's, it's very refreshing seeing new cars. <coughs> Some attention given to something else. So up to the locomotives. Um, I, I'm going to take the time to go through the sounds of each one because they're identical. Literally identical. Um... Between the modified and the as-built version, there's not a wild list of differences. Um, matter of fact, probably the most noticeable thing you're gonna see is the smoke box door. Other than that, I don't know that there's much difference. Um, the as-built has a larger smoke box door, where the modified has a smaller one. The point of that is, I have no idea, but it is definitely the most noticeable feature between the two. Other than that, they're pretty much the same locomotive. Um, it's not wildly different. Really, really, really good looking. A really nice placard there. Machine Rail is pretty well known for their nice uh, builder's plates and such. It's got a nice light weathering overall. Um, there is not a... Uh, they didn't do a clean and weathered variant. Um, they just kind of have a 
a light weathering, kind of like the locomotives in active use, but not not cared for. So we got you know kind of our steam leakage right here, a hard water leakage right around where the whistle fitting is. Uh, of course, kind of a light dusting of uh, smoke across the whole top end. Something a coal burner would definitely end up having. Excellent looking model though. Nice crispy lettering across the cab door here, or the side of the cab wall. Nice crispy lettering. 3D rivets. Tender light. Got some, you know, kind of scratches going on. <coughs> Makes the paint and the metal not look perfect. So that's nice. It's actually really, really, really nice. I like it. It's a really good looking locomotive. Nuts, bolts, rivets. It's so nice seeing it. I know this is going to sound dumb, but dang, that's a good looking padlock. kind of cool. It's a good looking bad luck. It really is. Um, everything looks just really, really nice. Um, unfortunately, all these little divots here, they're all 2D. They're part of the 2D texture board on the, uh, on the side of the firebox, but they're not too terribly blurry. Not unless you get up really, really close. So from, you know, about here back, it looks, it looks uh, really nice. So not going to, not going to hate on it for that. Especially with the rest of these uh, nuts, bolts, rivets. Everything looks really nice. What are you? You look entertaining. Ah, you go to the brakes. Something we'll have to check out and see. See if it functions. I imagine it does. Um, <laughs> the ever famous DSG DDR had a hand, had a helping hand in the production and design of these, so if I'm a betting human being, a lot of the bells and whistles on this locomotive are, um, fiddleable. I know, I just made that word up, but they can be manipulated. But, man, everything looks good. Why am I a company? Looks pretty good. And of course our modified. Like I said, I didn't notice a whole lot that's really different between the side and the as built outside of the smoke box door. Um you Illinois Central fans can probably pick out all the actual differences, but I myself I don't see enough to go, oh my goodness. I gotta go through each and every one of them, so I'm not gonna bother. Um, our air pumps up on the front. I got some nice little bit of steam leakage going on here. Now the steam leakage looks really, really nice overall. <laughs> All the kind of idle steam that looks really good. That looks really good. That looks really good. I really like the ambient steam. The smoke. It looks. It looks good. But it, it doesn't look as good as that. I don't know. I don't know what it is that makes that look so good. But that right there looks awesome. That. 
that compared to that doesn't look as good. This compared to a lot of the other steam locomotives in TS looks really nice. Um, we got some real neat marker lights here with the hoods over the front. It's kind of a unique thing. So let's get in it. Just get in it and get going. Ah! Safety valves. A lovely thing. Ooh! The sounds ain't identical inside and out. Awesome! I love it. So before we get rolling down the track here, let's be sure our, uh, our track is open for us. Put us out on the rails. Eh, that just puts us out on open rails. I'm not worried about being perfect. So, inside. Inside looks really, really nice. Injectors, water tests, sorry, check, check valves, test valves. Um, yeah, we don't get that one. We don't get that one. We don't get that one. Cylinder cox, sander, bell. I feel like that is normally your sander. I feel like it should have been the sander. Oh well. <coughs> sander valve, sander. Um, of course, train brake. We don't get that one. Maybe that's supposed to be locomotive brake. Let's see. Nope. That's locomotive brake. Huh. Interesting. Oh well. <laughs> um. So we don't get that one. Of course our locomotive brake. Our reverse gear. Little door hinges. Down here. Or ventilation hinges. Windows. Ooh, windows sound really nice. Door. Um, headlights. Front and back headlight. Uh, we don't get that one. I believe. There we go. Class lights, task light, which will be all the external lighting, um, gauge lights, and cab lights. Now cab lights will kind of punch your frame rates a little bit, as is pretty typical. But they look really nice. If you got a high-end computer that will run this like it's nothing, cab lights look really cool with the shadow effects. Um, but we don't need them, so... Go outside and look at all the lights that I have now turned on. Oh. Will it turn the tender light on? No. Headlight. Head look looks awesome. Nice orange. Not a bright white light. Not an LED. It's got a nice orange glow to it. Looks really good. Um, marker lights look phenomenal. Of course, the U key changes the color. Shift U will change it back. Marker lights look absolutely awesome. Love them. Oh, task light switches. Duh. Our task. Our light bulb here. Boom. And here. Which look awesome. You know, it's not a bright neon glow. It's just enough. That looks really nice. Go ahead and turn those off.
First we got our gauge lights. Um, yeah, <laughs> nothing fancy. Um, general steam valve, our roof hatches. Go ahead and open all those for giggles and squiggles. Of course it shows outside as well. They got a nice sound to them. <coughs> um, air pumps, injector steam, lubricator, turret valve, of course our throttle. Let's hop on over. We got our firebox. Fire looks pretty good. We don't get those. Uh, we don't get those. We don't get those. We don't get that one. <coughs> Blower. Stoker. Go ahead and start building our fire up a little bit here. <coughs> Whoops. Too far. I wonder if the, uh, the Stoker's modeled. Oh, it's inside. That'd be your, uh, your Stoker line right there. Of course, window. Window, window. Um, injector water. Steam heating. Don't get that one, don't get that one. So, I think we went over all the gauges. I think we've touched all that we can touch. Let's take it down the rails. Actually, let's play with one more thing. There are two more things. So, our reverse gear is modeled. With uh, Baker valve gear. It's a new one for train simulator. That looks pretty good, nice and smooth. And since we're outside, we're gonna uh, we're gonna do it this way. Actually, Put our brakes to full set and see if the brakes play. Aw, darn. So it does have the brakes modeled, but they're not animated. So sad days, but that's fine. Scared to that. Most of you know I don't run with the HUD all that often. I got my F5 HUD, it's good enough. Now something that is weird, uh, you can crank up the stoker, but you still have to have the fireboxes open for the stoker to uh, build up. So that's kind of odd. I'm not a big fan of that, but eh. Where's our injectors? Um, da -dum -da -dum -da -dum -da 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 valve oh I wonder what that is that's cool bring that down we don't want to build it up too too much too too quick Go ahead and open our cylinder cocks.
That looks awesome. That right there. That is awesome. I know it's a dumb thing to notice, but that looks good. Love that right there. What a phenomenal whistle. Now the bell is a little bit quiet, it's really hard to hear it over anything, but it does sound nice, it is a steam operated bell, and it does function. The whistle does function. Looks pretty nice. Oh, that's what I'm missing. I knew I was missing something dumb. That is, without a doubt, one of the best sounding whistles in game now. <laughs> as far as North American content goes, that is without a doubt the, the absolute best mm, blended sound for a whistle. It just it sounds like a good beginning, a great middle, and a great end. Really nice sounding. Now the chuff sounds are a little bit quiet. Um, especially once we get going here. It kind of melts out a little bit. But Should be out where it's about yeah, 30. <laughs> let's, let's get it up and going. Now, <laughs> physics wise, it's pretty typical of machine rail. Um, it's not like hardcore, maybe mesh tools like perfection, but it's not old RSC. arcade style um, it's kind of a happy in between you know it still requires some skill to operate 
but it's not so hard that you spend a week trying to figure it out. <laughs> well, dang, they decided to go right on through. So are they. Interesting. <laughs> Boy, people in Topeka got no care whatsoever. They're going to drive right through the train. Now, while we're getting down the road here, let's go check this out. Oh, let's leave that open. So, let's check out our, cab our caboose views. Um, our, our posters here are a little bit low res. Not a big issue. Not something we're staring at all the time. Everything else looks really, really good. A couple of you... Real nice. <laughs> Their bathroom view. Taking a shit. <laughs> it's kind of entertaining. Um, not half bad though. You can sit here and stare at uh, stare at yourself while you while you get a little busy. <laughs> so our side view got a little fire going on over here. Something cooking on the stove? Nah. Dang! I certainly wouldn't mind that cast iron pot though. A little coal bin over here with a little hand shovel. map I just say it looks really really good you know credit where it's due it really does um it's very different I will say I'm a bit disappointed with the car sounds the kind of ambient sounds because there's the occasional clickety clack that's about it <laughs> um You know, the sound of a car going over a point, but other than that, there's really nothing. Um, thankfully, Machine Rail didn't include a particular sound that I absolutely hate. Um, they did away with that awful flange screech whenever the locomotive goes around a corner. So, as you guys saw, we left the yard back there, we were around the corner. You know what we didn't hear? That high pitch loud scream um, that was my biggest complaint with the H9s and one of the reasons I very rarely ever go back to them because if you run those on a mountainous route or the Hanover sub where they would be normal it's it's really 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 annoying going around any curves whatsoever because all you hear is a scream so thankfully, they got rid of that scream it is so so stinking nice but on the opposite side of the spectrum we don't have a whole lot of sound going on here which I mean some may like it some may not I don't dislike the clickety clack I just kinda wish there was a little bit more of a wind noise <laughs> maybe the kind of occasional screech like cling clang that kind of stuff but eh. It's kind of interesting that our steam pressure is only 48, but we're still losing boiler pressure. Now we're going to see if I have this issue again. Um, yeah, 20% reverser with a wide open throttle. We're only doing 35 mile an hour, and we are rapidly losing boiler pressure, which shouldn't be. Um, it shouldn't be that bad. Ha! <laughs> 
Nice! It's a nice sound occlusion there. Let's hop down here. Probably make it. Ooh! That distance is really, really nice. But we're still running into this issue. So it's yeah, just under 40 mile an hour, 60% throttle, 20% reverser. We had a nice roaring fire here. <laughs> we had decent boiling water level. And we're still losing steam pressure. We're not building it. Which isn't right. It shouldn't be that way. It should be pretty easy to maintain that boiler pressure at 40 mile an hour with especially with how short of a train we've got. We don't have much weight here. Oh yeah. Something else I forgot to look at. Let's see if we get any sand. Yeah, we got a little bit of sand here. <laughs> Back from the front. That looks pretty nice. Nice little touch there. Our lubricator here. That's nice. Motion looks pretty good. I like it. The sound is pretty nice. Um. You can hear the the loop a little bit. It is a little noticeable. Not too bad, but it is definitely there. Something else I noticed. I don't see dampers anywhere. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't see any dampers. Yeah, we're still losing boiler pressure. 40 mile an hour. So, let's see. Let's just start cutting our throttle here and see where it takes to start. Right there, 53. But we're also losing speed. So, there's something a little wonky with the physics. Something not right. Um, 40 mile an hour, it should really easy to maintain your boiler pressure with such a small load here that that should be easy that should be really easy honestly <laughs> now this smoke looks pretty decent the idle smoke kind of eh. this looks pretty nice Let's go ahead and start bringing it to a stop. Actually, you know what? Let's pop off an emergency and see if it'll slide. Oh, no slide. I know if your load is heavy enough, you can uh, slip the drivers, but looks like you can't lock those up. Matter of fact, emergency, it's got a nice slowdown. You know, it doesn't come to an immediate halt. Pretty nice. I do like it. That actually sounds pretty cool. That kind of... Uh, that brake squeal.
This chef sounds are really, really nice. Yeah, see again, we're burning through boiler pressure like it's nothing. 20 mile an hour, 38% uh, reverser, 100% throttle. We're absolutely murdering our boiler pressure. Now this, ah, yeah, see right there. That that's not right. Um, I will say. The, uh, the sound blending is way, way better this time around. Um, I know with the H9s, it was pretty noticeable where the, uh, the speeds, the different speeds kicked over. So those sounds are really, really nice. They're, uh, they're blended a lot better. I hate playing with the HUD. Twenty six miles an hour, sixty two percent, thirty six, still losing boiler pressure. That's sad. That's kind of frustrating. But anywho, guys. Anywho. Oh wait, here's our whistle. So it sounds really good, it looks really good, but operation leaves a little bit to be desired with that uh with that issue with the boiler pressure there. That's kinda kinda upsetting. So anywho There it is guys. Machine Rails the latest and greatest, the Illinois Central fifteen hundred class, two A two Mikados. The first official Nice, high quality 2A2 for North America. You can go check it out on their website. I believe it's 20 bucks. Um, yeah, not much else I can say. Not a whole lot else to say. So, hope you guys enjoyed the video. As always, link in the description. I will see you guys next time.